Now, here's where it gets even more fun is there are different dimmer curves. You might want to use the inverse square law curve for LEDs. I demonstrated that in the preview section showing how smooth the LED dimming is. You might want the linear curve, which is much more common for controlling uh, MR16s and small motors. Or you might be running something that needs to be just turned on and off, like a water pump, for instance, or air brakes on a moving set piece, something that is uh, not something you want to dim. So there are three dimming curves, linear, inverse square law, and non-dim. And you pick those curves by setting the level of the channel at the moment that you push the button. So I'll give you an example here. I will put, if I put this channel all the way up, so that's 100%, and I push the uh, set B button, I have now set the 100% mark means non-dim. So now, if you look at that LED, when I get down below half, it switches off. And I get up above half, and it switches on. There's no dimming. That's now a non-dim curve. But for an MR16, which I'm going to take and connect now, here's the, another MR16. I will connect this up to dimmer output A. So now I have an MR16 on that channel. That's uh, channel A. And I will show you if I set channel A to be non-dim. Now it is switching on and off. I don't get the dimming. I would, if I want to have the linear curve, I will go somewhere between 50 and 75 percent on the dimmer. If you're using a digital console, type in 60. That's a good choice. And now with it at that level, I will hold the set button. And I've now selected the linear dimmer curve, and so I can very smoothly fade that lamp up and down, as you would expect any light to work. And then finally, if I'm using an LED, I would want to set the inverse square law curve. So I would put that fader anywhere between 25 and 50 percent, so say um, 40 percent. And, uh, and I push the set button. And I will now get, can you hear that high pitch? Yeah. That high pitch is inaudible if you're running an LED, but it is visible with an MR16. And the reason that's happening is the very high resolution of, LA, of, uh, of LED dimming requires the update rate of the dimmer pulse width modulation system to be much slower. So you don't want to use the inverse square law curve for something like an incandescent lamp where the filament can resonate and you'll hear that noise. With LEDs, there's nothing that resonates, so it's not a problem at all. And you can hear that that pitch is actually quite high, high enough that with an LED it won't strobe on video or cause any other artifact problem uh, if you're doing something other than live performance. But that is, you can still see the curve, which is uh, markedly nonlinear, actually. So I will go back to the linear curve so that we don't hear that whine. There we go. We're back to something that's suitable for an incandescent lamp. So I'll just point out again that those selections of curve and uh, channel assignment are completely independent for each of the two dimmers. And uh, in fact, for our four-channel dimmers, that is also true. You uh, have complete independent control and selectivity for each of the dimmers. Each output will handle uh, 10 amps, but the total power handling of the entire box is 15 amps, and we ship it with a 15-amp uh, fuse. That's an automotive fuse. So if you happen to blow it, it's easy to go out to an all-night Walmart or something and get another fuse. It's uh, very simple to, uh, to replace the fuse. So just pull it out of there and plug another one in. The RC4 Magic Series 2 uh, is fully overcurrent and over-temperature protected. So if you overload it in a way where it runs too hot, it will turn itself off. And if you, uh, if you run a load that is too large for the dimmer to sustain for a long time, an overcurrent case, perhaps you put a very large fuse in and you're running something that, uh, in a case where the fuse doesn't blow, that's okay. You still will have a very hard time damaging the electronics because it will uh, do the overcurrent shutdown. One thing that I have seen that sometimes confuses people is they'll put a load on the dimmer that is much larger than a little box like this is intended to, to run. And then they'll call me and ask me why that output is, is blinking on and off. 
and it is because of the protection. So you can put a, this can only handle a 10 amp load. Suppose we put a 15 amp load on one channel. That's not gonna blow the 15 amp fuse, but it's too much load for that single dimmer. So what will happen is it will work for a few seconds or even minutes, and then it will overheat and it will turn itself off rather than allow itself to be damaged. And as it cools off, it will come back on. So we'll end up with a, a cycling effect that uh, can be disconcerting for sure, but you have to understand that when you operate the dimmer within its specs, that is 10 amps or under, that you won't get that effect. And in fact, you're seeing blinking instead of having destroyed the dimmer. So I, I think that's actually a good thing. Um, that's a, that is a good summary of the DMX2 dim, and there's more detail in the user manual that's available for download. Of course, you can always phone us and ask us if you have some other questions. But as I said at the beginning, that's our most popular dimmer. That's what it's all about. That's what it does. I hope you like it. <laughs>